Welcome to the Waiver Wire Wizards, week 12. My goodness, this is the official fantasy football podcast for Secret Friends Unite. This comes to our first to Patreons ad free, followed by our regular subscribers on our SFU feed that you can check out your uh, all of your fantasy football needs, whether you're a Patreon or you're not. But obviously, Patreons get it first and ad free. So with that, I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, joined by Sean Nias. We're sitting in Minnesota. There's no snow yet. No jinx. Um, we are ready to roll. We are in prime football weather. Um, we are getting down to it, whether you're a big college football fan or you're a fan of the NFL. The pretenders are going away. Coaches are being fired. GMs are finally being fired. And uh, injuries are being resolved at this point. So there we go. Sean, um, how you feeling? I'm on cloud nine. I am on cloud nine. I had my first week where uh, by the time we got to halftime of the early games, I knew I had a win because I was already at 110 points. It was just glorious. And, and, and Henry's like, dad, why are you so happy? I don't, I'm not stressing. I actually can enjoy the games and, and, and win. And it, it just positioned me for this week, which we're going to be really talking about because matchups are difficult, but I was able to cruise. So I'm six and five. I am one game out of the playoff spot, but I've got head to head wins against the teams that are ahead of me. And they're playing the top two guys this week. Mm. And I've got the middle of the road guy. So if I get a win at six and six, I'm in. I think if I can get two more wins after I go, well, I need three wins in total. Go to six and six, get an eight win season. I can get into the playoffs and then all bets are off. Nice, nice. Um, It was, I, I did win 160. And to your point, I thought I was screwed because he played um, Saquon Barkley and Austin Eckler. So like literally Thursday night, he's got 50 points. I'm like, I am screwed. Uh, but Sean, I played Jared Goff. <laughs> I, uh, I had, I had Jared, Jared Goff, Brock Bowers, and I forgot who else, but I'm like, I'm at 90 something points you know, with like three players. So I'm like, I'm feeling pretty good. So, but it did come down to it. Basically I was up six leading into um, the Monday night game. And then Nico Collins delivered 10 points and I was good to go. I was going up against Dallas's tight end and he got two points. So, uh, so you're, you're in, you're in league in your league just really quickly. Yeah. Was Goff the highest scoring quarterback? He had to be. Um, I mean, I that was an unbelievable there's a ranking. Day. Yeah, I'm trying to think where their all these stats are. It was amazing. And 52 points. I mean, and I look where Goff's playing uh, Jacksonville. No, he's playing Indianapolis next week. So I'm like, it's not our gift. Keeps on giving. We'll go. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting him too. But yeah, it's going to be fun. We have to give a shout out to our supporters. Yes, our Patreons. Uh, They're the ones that make this happen. Um you know, we've been doing Patreon for about 18 months now, so we've had a great time doing it. And we've uh, had, you know, great members that have supported us through all of this that allowed us to be better. It allowed us to improve our uh, equipment like what I'm using today. It's all helped us allow us to get cool new artwork and things like that. So thank you all to our Patreons that make this happen. They help us pay the bills so we can make this happen. And um, we don't have to worry about um, doing other things like running Manscaped ads like we used to. <laughs> We do run a Zancaster ad, but that's if you're not a Patreon. So, you know, you can avoid those by just subscribing for as little as $2 a month. So the cool part about that is you also get cool new interviews, all the cool stuff we do. Uh, Charlie's going to be interviewing uh, Leonard Nimoy's son, and he's got a new book coming out. So that's going to be on our podcast. What? Yes, really? yes, yes. Uh, yeah, one of our cool patrons, we talked about him last week, is hooking us up with some cool interviews. We're looking at some comic book creators. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a cool guy, the world of podcasting from uh, the world of video games on our show next week. So, uh, yeah, things are going forward. And we're always looking for new people to have on the show. Um, and I'm going to probably reach out for a certain author that wrote about the Dark Knight. Now, I will so, say this. Um, both Charlie and Mark... Don't take this the wrong way, Todd. They do awesome interviews. 
They do really great interviews. Well, thank you, Sean. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, that's great. No, because they've been doing a lot of them, which is great. Uh, yes. You know, Timothy Zahn, Mark was just at Halcon. He got to interview some amazing voice actors, um, and he's had some great people. And that's what I, we're so had glad to be able to do that kind of stuff. And then, uh, of course, Charlie's hooking up some stuff. So there we go. And I think we'll just have to put out some stuff for new Patreons that might have missed it. But we had like that awesome Doug Jones interview. I interviewed two of my favorite authors back in the day, so I may put those back into the main feed just so if people forgot about those, uh, they'll be able to access those, and I think they'll enjoy that. So, uh, but hey, got to thank our besties, Derek Trevelyan, a.k.a. The Figure Dude, Francie, April's Hairdresser, XCP, Xbox Expansion Pass, Mr. Luke Lore, Charlie's Uncle Tim. Yes, thank you, Uncle Tim. We appreciate you. Uh, Friends with Benefits, John Sedorf, Phoenix Sisters Entertainment, Brandon Myers, Corian HD, Matthew Keel, and Kurt Krug. He's got connections. He's our guy that is hooking us up. He's always been supportive of us, and now he's a Patreon member. So thank you so much, Kurt. And not only that, but our secret friend, Super Squad. Uh, can't say enough about them. Rach, thanks for letting me podcast. And I just got to have a shout out to Mark, the Canadian. Uh, H-Dog and I are loving, uh, based on his review of the new Mario Party game, Todd, when you come over for Thanksgiving, we're going to have to battle. Super fun game. Thanks, Mark. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, uh, if you like video games, we talk about that in co-op mode. Sean's been on the show. We we, we are going to have a new uh, guest on Monday, so look forward to that. And, you know, if questions about what Black Friday games to buy, maybe we'll talk about that too, because that is coming up very soon. There's a really going to be a big deal on some stuff, so we'll check that out. Uh, but last, thing. Oh, yeah. I think for Kurt, we may have to give him the nickname The Fixer. The Fixer? Because he's got connections. He can help you get the interviews. Okay. I like that. I like that. Or I was the man say, with a plan. Something. We gotta I, I'm sure Charlie will come up with a really cool name or Mark, but we gotta give him a cool nickname. Yeah, he's he's a big Michigan State fan. So, you know, we assigned him the Falcons because of uh Kirk, but that didn't go so well this week. And Seattle because of uh, Walker. Walker. Okay. So we'll go there. The, that, that AFC West or the NFC West is a hot mess, but it's exciting because we don't know what's going to happen. So with That's that, uh, thank you all on Patreon land. We appreciate you. And thank you for making this shit happen. Uh, by the way, look out for our new uh, artwork that Adam Leonard did for us uh, as part of his support for um, extra life. So thank you, Adam, for that. Um, and Sean, I've requested a hat for you. We'll see if that gets updated in the artwork. <laughs> oh, you don't have to do a hat, but the artwork looks amazing, guys. I'm looking forward to that and uh, having that as a background and also getting that printed as a pint glass. I have looked at that. I think I have a place where we can get make that happen. So uh, more to come on that. So with that, Sean, we got to look back before we look forward. Um, holy crumbs. There was so many good games this weekend. Um, you know, the Vikings won, but not exactly what I would call a very exciting game to watch in a lot of ways. There were some surprises, um, but ultimately, we did the job. <laughs> we went the game. Tennessee played us really tough. I thought, man, they're actually playing really well. Uh, their quarterback was pretty good, and their defense was tough. So we pulled it out. So we did what we had to do. We're 8-2, and two, Sean. Who knew? Who knew? 8-2. Holy crumbs. <laughs> Feels good to be a Viking. Well... And there's two two pieces that are interesting with that is your backup quarterback, Sam Darnold, is starting, leads the league in interceptions. Your That's crazy first round draft pick can't get on the field. Now I think he might be a little banged up and he's still learning the ropes. And you're winning. Yep. It's amazing. Um, that defense. That defense. Yeah. Um I was uh talking to the the neighbor josh um they just feel they're in a really good place um defensively they've got depth they've got talent they've they're playing it as a cohesive unit it's fun to watch and i don't know how andrew van ginkle is not in the discussion for defensive player of the year where did he's got I mean, he I, I just feel like he came out of nowhere. I don't know how notable he was before he came on the Vikes, but it feels like he just he, it, this so, this this defense has worked for him. What the hell? Yes, 
interesting history. He's from Northwest Iowa. Okay. Group, uh, Is he a Vikings, Vikings fan? fan? Okay, there you go. Because yes. he's either that or the now, Chief in Iowa. You go um, one, or one, one or two directions. He was down in Miami when Flores was down there. So when Flores got fired and then um, they got the new regime in, he came up uh, because Flores wanted him and they had a great relationship and it's working out. Now, I will say all of those defensive signings have really panned out well. Um, They just look really good. And down the stretch, they're going to be a tough team. I mean, they get after the quarterback. Uh, This week's going to be interesting against the Bears on the road. But Bears didn't really look that great against Green Bay, nor did Green Bay, which is interesting. Um, Well, the Bears have lost two games in last plays. They'd be six and four. I mean, that blocked field goal, uh, that yep. or the, the Hail Mary. I mean, it's yeah. Crazy. And the it's, Packers, it's, they're, they're luck. I mean, the, the Packers, I would say, are getting lucky rather being, than being very good in a lot of ways. Um, Jordan Love is not a $55 million a year quarterback right now. He's good. What they Too got, Sean. Rovers. Um, Josh Jacobs is looking good and I'm liking that. Yeah. Keep giving him yeah. the ball, especially with the fact Jordan Love turning the ball over. Um, and I feel bad because with Dobbs, with Reed, they're not getting the ball a lot. I mean, I started Tucker Craft. I figured he would have a touchdown. Yeah. He got me zero. That's and rough. I'm that like, is really? so rough. Wow. Yeah. It, I mean, it's rough right now. Yep. Um, but we'll one thing it. I want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One thing I want to uh, really shout out, though, is the Vikings defensive, uh, their celebrations are so amazing. <laughs> Did you see that Ray Gun one? That is so funny. Now there's socks that you can get with Ray Gun with with um, with what's his name? Uh, you know, Cam Bynum. I mean, it's the, the, the one thing they do where you like stand on your head and you collapse. I mean, it's so much fun. The other one was the the. Uh, what was it? The parent trap one or something? Lindsay Lohan handshake. I mean, they even talked about it on late night when Lindsay Lohan was on and they showed it. I mean, they got some really good comedy. I mean, it's a good cohesive unit. They're just enjoying themselves. They're having fun, which is so awesome. If you got that really, you're a, you can overcome a lot of crap when it happens, especially, you know, considering, where everybody was at the beginning of the season's like, oh, by the way, your first round draft pick, you won't see him the rest of the year. I mean, come right. on. JJ, I mean, JJ now is going to surpass, you know, I mean, I think he's close to being like the top uh, receiver in, in yards after six years or something like that, too. Yeah, the first five years, he's set to be the number one receiver. And then keep in mind, he missed seven games last year. Keep in mind, he's had very erratic <laughs> quarterback play, play too. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Josh yeah. Allen's always back there, and Patrick Mahomes is always back there. Um, you don't you don't have consistency, you know. You're not you don't have uh, uh, you know Joe Burrow thrown to him. So um, yeah, yeah, wow. I, that, that's where I don't. Um, Jamar Chase is a great talent, and I'm not going to take anything away from him. Uh, but Jefferson has done more with less and made quarterbacks a lot of money, such as um, Kirk Cousins, who had a difficult game against Broncos, which I, I, uh, I'm i going to be honest with you. The Denver Broncos are making a playoffs, and they're going to make a statement in the playoffs. That defensive front four is real. They've got a good back half in the secondary because they have Patrick Sertan the second, who I think right wow. now is the best cornerback in the league and Sean Payton's got Bo Nix looking like Drew Brees. I was watching a play um, earlier today uh, while I was on the Peloton and they ran a play action counter where the entire offensive line went left and Bo Nix rolled out right and everybody and their brother on Atlanta bit on the play action and the tight end was wide open and he just checked. It was a thing of beauty and it was perfect placement of the ball. If if I had to rank the rookie quarterbacks right now, 
Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, Drake May, Caleb Williams. Yep. It's it, uh, Bo Nix just, I mean, right now, look at the Denver schedule. If you need a quarterback in a pinch because you don't have it, he's going to get you something. That is going to make our friends over at the nerd, uh, the the nerd chat, very happy, uh, because at this point um, they are all Denver fans. So good for you guys. Uh, although you've already had one enough Super Bowls, so I really don't care. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you know, we t- I, I just think about like top performers this week, Sean. If I ask you who's the like number two quarterback uh, performance this this week, would you have mentioned that it was Jamison Winston? 395 I yards. Three, I, I was going to say he had 396 yards, two touchdowns. He didn't throw a pick. Yeah. Um, I watched that game and the Saints dominated. He he was everything. Uh, I believe Jerry Judy had 160 yards on six catches and a touchdown. Did you see what uh, Pace Chubb, Hill did? Three touchdowns. Like, I mean, he did everything this weekend. What, what surprised me there is... It's weird. Cleveland's defense is clearly checked out. Yes. Because you've got Tomlinson, you've got Miles Garrett, you've got Ward, you've got a bunch of really good folks on defense. And for the Saints to put the whooping on them like they did, they've checked out. I wonder if Stefanski gets fired. I mean, I was looking at their cap number next year. So... Uh, Deshaun Watson will be $96 million against the cap next year. And they're $11 million over the cap. I mean, you got to do a complete rebuild. And the problem is Todd, you've got Cam Ward down in Miami and maybe Sanders in Colorado, but neither one of them in my mind are anywhere near the, the, the folks that got drafted this year. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, we'll see. I mean, if Stefanski gets fired, it's not his fault. I mean, he didn't. He didn't choose that quarterback. He didn't choose that deal. I mean, none of that stuff. No, the so, owner did. Oh, so I'm thinking if Stefanski gets fired, that dude is going to find a home very quickly as an offensive coordinator. You know, very quickly if he doesn't get a quarterback job, and that's perfectly fine because there'll be op- there'll be positions opening. Oh, maybe like in Chicago at this point, right? I think Cliff Kingsbury goes there. Okay. Okay. As the head coach. Yeah, because he coached Caleb in. Was it? Oh, no, he didn't. Was he Caleb Caleb in Oklahoma? That was Lincoln. No, he didn't. That was Lincoln Riley. But but it's a good fit there. We'll see what happens because. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Man. We're gonna the hot seat's gonna start up soon. I mean, if you were if you're looking to Dallas, man, it's gonna be in Dallas because Jerry Jones just lets you stick around regardless of how incompetent you are uh, or incompetent he is. Um, so other than that, Sean, any Run. any other calls? Any other calls for like top performances it. or games you loved? Detroit can score. There, there's speed kills, man. They they could get close to the highest scoring team because if you look at their schedule and Dan Campbell does not take his foot off the pedal, man. No, no. Holy moly. <laughs> That's how you get wow. 15 points when you're already. <laughs> it's like, and you know what? I don't mind that. I don't, there's no mercy rules in football. Hey, they're adults. They're professionals. If they want to stop them, stop them. Go, go for it. And you know what? The, the other thing I will say really quickly is the Steelers' defense is real. Um, If Boswell is available, get him. Because just the way their offense operates under Russ, you're going to get nine points. Yep. Just because the turnovers generated, maybe not through an interception, but because of the pressure that the Steelers' defense gets, it's going to be a third and long, results in a punt. And then, you know, Russ is going to move the ball. They don't really have a great running game. You're going to get a field goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chargers look like they're for the real, the real deal. Looks like they can overcome adversity. I think they're going to be fun to watch. And um, I'm glad Kansas City lost because now they can figure out, hey, let's make some corrections. We don't, we don't have to worry about going undefeated. It's, but it's going to be a lot of fun. 
I think the AFC is going to be The other part that's really yeah. interesting is Buffalo has a tough stretch. They've got San Francisco, the Rams, Detroit. Then they've got New England twice. Um, I think I've got Buffalo with five losses. Wow. Wow. Okay. We shall see. Uh, what, by the way, Detroit, they could go undefeated the rest of the season. I looked at their schedule. I mean, I don't want them to beat us, but I think we're the toughest team left on their schedule. I looked at the, uh, well, I mean, obviously they're playing Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, unfortunately, that game in week 18 between us and Detroit is going to be meaningless. We're going to have the number five seed. They're going to have the number one seed, and it's going to be a battle of the scrubs. That one's yeah. going to be a sleeper. Yep. Uh, bring out your uh, players that may want to uh, make the contract for next year. We'll see what it is, which yep. is a shame because, you know, that'd be a fun game to watch too. But we'll see. Hey, you know what? Let's go out the pride. School pride, purple pride. There we go. Uh, you know, that's our look back. Um, and then we got to talk about how our teams performed in regards to our roster um, for buy, rent, return. Oh, my goodness, Sean. You did well. Oh, I had a I laundry well. list. Okay. Oh, man. I, I could have gone, you know, obviously my return is craft. I expected yeah. him to do well against Chicago. Uh, the matchup was right. Um, they were like 23 or 24 against, you know, yards for tight ends. And for him to get zero was shocking. I rented yeah. Jacobs. And the only reason I rented Jacobs on most people's roster, they would be number one, but I had Saquon and Saquon got me 35 points. Yeah. And yep. then the other buy I had is Jared Goff. Holy oh. cow. What was it, like 400 yards and four TDs? 45 five? points, something like that. And I have Stafford as my Jeez. other guy and he got 36. So I'm like, I, I felt like you know, either way, I'm like, oh. I'm playing house, with house money at this point. And I, I texted you, yeah, Burrow or Goff, and you were like, yeah. Goff. Yep. And I kid you not, I put them in right as games were starting. I'm like, all right, I'm going to roll with Todd on this one. And then it was early on, I was like, oh, God, Detroit's going to run, run, run. And then all of a sudden, he started slinging it. <laughs> slinging it, slinging it, and slinging it. And, and then Barkley I also started playing. We saw finally scored a touchdown, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I meaningless it carries, scores of the year. <laughs> I'm hoping it carries forward. I mean, there's a reason I'm wearing my Indianapolis jersey is because yeah. this guy is now dead. And I was looking Everybody's at been fired. Everybody's been fired <laughs> except for the <laughs> GM, their head quarterback. They're all they're all fired. At least Rogers just by himself <laughs> throwing the there, there was a meme. Is is it ever happened where your starting quarterback is your head coach, your GM, offensive coordinator, uh, joking about Rogers? But I mean, <sighs> let's be honest. It's time. Um, I looked at their um, over the cap numbers, and they'll they'll have to make him a post June cut. Otherwise, they'll have like. 25 million in dead cap and stuff, but they just got to reset. They just do. Uh, and then oof. they'll, they'll yeah. release uh, Devonte Adams to save 32 million. Yep. And they'll everybody just they brought in everybody they brought in just to make him happy. And, you know, if he says relax now, can people just throw like batteries at him? <laughs> but, but this is where I'm going to say something. You had Aaron Rodgers dictating who came in. And then in the offseason last year, you had um, the defensive pass rusher, Crosby, saying, I'm going to hold out if you don't hire uh, the, the, the coach there now. And look at what, what's happened. He was unable to uh, run an offense. He was unable to be a head coach. And you wasted a year of Max Crosby. Let the GMs hire the appropriate staff that can build and foster teams. It's about a system where the GM and the head coach are in one. Look at them. Andy Reid, right? Look at even where we're at in Minnesota. Have we had some hard times? But KLC sure. and uh, 
Coyce here doing well out in uh, uh, L.A. with uh, uh, McVeigh and uh, oh God, what's his name? Uh, th- you get a good system together. Even in Miami, you're able to build a cohesive unit. Not only that, players want to come. Players want to come to Minnesota. I mean, who would have said that, right? No, look at Detroit. Dan Campbell, his offensive coordinator. Everybody's working there. Everybody's clicking. They bought in, and they got a they got culture now, and it's amazing. Um, you can't rent culture. Your offensive coordinator in in Detroit could have had any head coaching job, and he came back. Yeah, yeah. culture is um, huge. Um, yeah. my my CEO of my my health plan says culture eats strategy for lunch. Yep, you get your teams to buy in and I'm not saying it's a fake buy-in right um and that's one of the things with my team and I'm not saying my team's like a football team but you create a strong culture and a build a sense of team it goes a long way oh yeah people people will stick around if they believe that we're on a good path they have leaders they like Mm -hmm. working for and they feel like we're going somewhere else um yeah uh, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. I mean, the Jets, they need to take a page from the Vikings and hopefully finally figure out who can build their culture. I thought, you know, Salah at least seemed like a solid dude. Um, but now they got to start over completely, and that's tough. They're one in five since they fired him. Karma's a bitch. Pardon mm-hmm. my language. No, but I do want to ask you um, when we get later on, with all the coaching changes coming, yep. What is the best and worst option? Like, if you were a head coach, yeah, where to go? Who would you go with? Uh, I, yeah. I've got my. I would run for the hills team. Yeah, I think you'd be surprised at which team that is. Okay, well, we'll say we'll say like the top three teams you don't want to go to. Okay, cool. Um, let me hit my uh, buy room turns. So buy Goff Bowers. I think that was my like eighty points right there. Thank you. Uh, Rent. Jordan Addison did well. I was not expecting that. He did awesome. I know. And I wasn't he expecting awesome. him. I'm like, oh, but I didn't play him. He was sitting on my bench. Got 18 points. I'm like, shit. So, but he was there. So I'm like, I should have bought, I should have rented him and used him. Return Drake London, but I don't, I can't blame that on Drake. Atlanta looked horrible. They scored like six points. I mean. I think. With Atlanta, the jury's out. And if you were to ask me, does Atlanta make the playoffs? I'm going with Tampa. And the reason I'm going with Tampa is Mike Evans is coming back. Granted, they lost. Oh, shoot. The dude who dislocated his ankle, and I feel bad for him. Um, They just have a better defense. Atlanta has no pass rush. And instead of drafting Michael Penix Jr., which... I really like him as a quarterback. He's going to be a great quarterback. But if you sign Kirk Cousins to a four-year, $160 million deal with $110 million guaranteed, you draft Loi Afa that went to um, Indy, who's tearing it up, and get a pass rusher because they have no pass rush. What's Penix Jr. you're going to do? He's like, if unless Kirk like gets destroyed – they got to play Kirk. And then as Penix Jr. come in like year four, he off, you know, after his rookie deals over and he's like, I haven't played a lick. Am I your, am I your new, you know, franchise quarterback without any real experience? Like a Jordan. Not Jones? only that because of Penix Jr.'s injuries in Indiana, um, before he went out to Washington, the brother's 25. Oof. Oof. So he's going to be a starting quarterback at 29. That's crazy. I mean, <laughs> and then he is maybe, I mean, the average quarterback plays to probably like 35 if they're right. lucky. And every, everybody was saying, oh, wow, that's going to derail JJ. Dude, JJ just turned 21. He was young. And he doesn't got a lot yes. of mileage on the. He doesn't get a lot, a lot of mileage on his uh, legs. I mean, he's got the injury, of course. But beyond that, I mean, he's got a lot of great years ahead of him, and he's a leader. Not only that, he, yeah. he didn't have to throw a lot either. No, so you don't yeah. have the wear and tear. 
No, and when he does throw, he throws well. So I, I'm very excited when he comes in because, I mean, that'll be a quarterback like we haven't had since, what, Dante Culpepper? <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think of anybody else since we've had that like like that. Maybe Teddy. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Dante. Yeah, Dante. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, with that, we need to look forward to week 12, Sean. Oh, my goodness. Um, it's coming together. There's teams that just have nothing to play for anymore. There's teams that are in the hunt. Um, we are in a tight division. The NFC uh, West is a really crazy division. I mean, are there any divisions you feel like that are finished? Like they're just like, why even bother? It feels like they're still competitive, but there's some you're just a a, a, a a trash can on fire. Like the, like the NFC South feels rough. AFC East is done. Yeah. I mean, it's Buffalo. Jets I mean, is Miami going to make a run? I mean, yeah. Miami, the problem that Miami has, they just, they're going to be better next year. Um, they just have too many injuries. I mean, um, they lost Phillips this year to a non contact injury after he blew his eight, uh, Achilles out last year. Um, the, oh God, the defensive pass rusher they got from Denver who played college in Clemson blew out his knee late last year. He's not going to be back this year. They did draft a good pass rusher as a rookie, but they just on defense don't have everything. Now, um, their secondary is improving. Um, but if Tua can get things going and they can score points. There's potential there. But the problem is, is they've got too large of a hill to climb. Yeah. Baltimore's going to make the playoffs. And the other problem you're going to run into is Denver and the Chargers are going to make the playoffs. I could all see a situation potentially where if another team gets on a run, with how difficult Baltimore's schedule is, you could go from a team that everybody was talking about being the one seed to potentially being the odd man out when you look at their schedule. It sounds like the Eagles from last year, right? Four they losses. Were, it was like the Eagles. They were like, oh, they, they crapped the bed at the end of the season. I mean, mm-hmm. it was funny. They talked it's about true. Lamar Jackson and great player. He just struggles against the teams he needs to beat. He's not the MVP against Buffalo. He's not the MVP against Kansas City. When that happens, you just don't make the playoffs or you don't go very far in the playoffs. So, yeah, I feel bad. I, I, yeah, because everybody was like anointing uh, Lamar as A, the MVP. And I was like, what are we, what are we, who's watching the same games here? There are much better, I mean, Jared Goff, um, my God, I would I, I would look at um, even Derrick Henry before him. There, there just are other options that I would consider. Um, I mean, Baltimore plays the Chargers this week, which is not going to be an easy win. No, no. Then <clears throat> you've got Billy the next week. They could lose two in a row. Now they've got six losses. Six and six, then, right? Then you play the Giants, which could be a win. Then you yeah. play Pittsburgh. And let's be honest, Mike Tomlin likes to sweep the Ravens. Then he plays, they play at Houston. Houston's going to be fighting for a playoff spot. They could be like eight and nine if they're lucky. They, let's say they're um, nine and eight. That ain't getting you in. No. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, they're going to go from the team that everybody three weeks ago was saying, oh, yeah, they're going to be the number one seed or the most likely team because of Derrick Henry to go to the playoffs and win the Super Bowl and knock off the Chiefs. And if now if you look at that, let's say they go nine and eight. Indy's five and six. They have an easier schedule. That could happen. Cincy, if they go on a run, oof, oof. could have Poor the Joe. same record at nine and eight. Or Joe Burrow. I mean, 
I hope he does. I feel bad for the team. I mean, just. I think I mean, I think it's been called out, though, with 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 Baltimore, their offensive coordinator can't figure out what the hell to do. I mean, apparently Derrick Henry got the ball like 13 times. I mean, he didn't touch the ball in the fourth quarter. The two point conversion. Derrick Henry doesn't get the ball. Are we feeling like that's like a beast mode? Bad decision like well, Seattle had. Come on. The other part that I would say that made it even more weird when I watched the game twice on NFL plus is when Mike Tomlin called the timeout. Baltimore didn't have a secondary play. They saw the formation and they went back. Tomlin to calls the timeout and they were like, what do we do? And if you watch, they're all confused. Once the ball snapped, I mean, the two point conversion was completely flubbed. That's so weird. You think Lamar Jackson, he's the field general. He can adjust, right? You, that's what well, great quarterbacks do. They say, holy crap, unless they're just not given that luxury or they just don't feel like they have the autonomy to do that. I don't know. Well, well, okay. So a quarterback like Peyton Manning got three options. He would come up to the line and he had the Omaha or, you know, mm-hmm. or you got the can, can, can. I blame the offensive coordinator on that because he needs to give Lamar two plays. Lamar yeah. can do can, 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 and say, you know what? I'm going to throw one up to Andrews because of the way they have it set up. The part that I was really surprised at is even if you want to use him as a decoy and it's a run to Lamar, Derrick Henry's 260 pounds. Have him run out and just beat the living hell out of a damn He's 190 pound line. cornerback. He's just big as your lineman. <laughs> Right. Just have him go hit somebody. Believe me, he would love stand to in do the that. way. Just even stand in the way to get around him would be take forever. Yeah, it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. like, what the hell? Uh, fun fact. Oh, last man. night, Sean, I was watching the Manning cast as I was watching the game and Jim Gaffigan was on. I didn't know the dude played. <laughs> I didn't know the guy played college football. That was so funny. Did you see that? Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting they bring a lot of great people on and there's a lot of folks that you're like, wow, you played football. Yeah. They even asked him like, what are you going to make the call? And like, okay, I'm going to call this. And like, Oh, I had no clue. Jim Gaffigan. Cause I didn't think when I look at him, like he doesn't look substantial, but the fact that he was playing for, I forget what team it was. Was it Nebraska? Was it Iowa? Can't remember the, the team it was, but yeah, too funny. Like 86. I'm like, Jesus. I love the fact that they pulled that out, but yeah, it was fun. Um, the official quarter zip, uh, broadcast i'm a big fan of the quarter zip so good times yeah i gotta get um, some yep it's it's a good time uh so with that yeah let's talk about these games coming up sean um we gotta get to the schedule it's gonna be fun um let me just say this is the week before we all get excited about football because thanksgiving football week we got great college games we got great football games it's so excited so this is like the calm before the storm and we are ready to talk Dude. about the big matchups you're going to be over. We're going to be watching all day football and it's going to be glorious. Yeah. Uh, by the way, folks, um, just let you know, um, if you are going to recommend, um, a food we should have for the Thanksgiving feast, let me know. I've got some things in mind. Uh, let us know if you have some favorite uh, holiday feasts that you think we should incorporate into the celebration. We're all open ears. Um, so there you go. Anybody that's gluten free, let us know too. My wife would appreciate that. So we go from there. Uh, Sean, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, good old AFC Central matchup. That's our uh, Thursday night game. Uh, I feel bad for Cleveland. I mean, Jameis Winston, I mean, at this point, I mean, he's trying to write the, the boat, but at this point, what do you even do? Pittsburgh's got the line. This is might be the, the lowest over under I've seen in forever. Pittsburgh minus three and a half over under 37 points. <laughs> but, but first to 20 points on, wins, <laughs> but we're on three consecutive weeks where the road team has struggled. Yeah. Pittsburgh's on the road and they just came off a smash mouth game. Yeah. Do I expect Cleveland to win? No, but I think it's going to be higher scoring and closer. So 
I like Russ and Pickens because I think you're going to see Russ to Pickens over to the top. I'm going to sit Chubb because Tomlin's going to take away the running game and make Winston throw because Winston is prone to picks. And then in larger leagues, I would start Judy and Winston because I think they're going to have to throw and you're going to get yards and potential. And then obviously you got to play Boswell because they, those boys like to kick the field goal. (laughs) Yes. they do. (laughs) Now what's interesting here, based on what we talked about with um, the Ravens schedule, the Steelers could lock up the division in like two weeks. Wow. That's amazing, That's pretty cool. right? That's pretty cool. And I wouldn't have expected it. I mean, Pittsburgh just seems to be the team, like, if they can finally get a a solid quarterback, like, if they can get another Ross, Roethlisberger or something like that, I mean, that's another 10-year run, right? I mean, of, like, excellence. Right now, they've just been winning despite their influx of irregular talent, which has just been crazy. Tomlin's, Tomlin could go down as, like, um, Despite the the Super Bowl wins, you know, collectively, I mean, he could go on with like the one of the best records ever. I don't know. I don't know. Now, what I would say about this is, you know how we talked about culture? If I'm the Jets or the Giants, I tell them I'll give you two first round draft picks for Tomlin. Can he go there? Remember, draft picks have been exchanged for coaches i i would do it in a heartbeat if i were them because it's a guarantee he's a culture creator man but that dude's Tom, I mean, awesome i mean unless they're going to make him the highest paid quarterback or sorry the highest paid like head coach ever dude, i just new york don't, well i know but i don't no think shit. tomlin would go to new york but would bell would bill belichick go to the jets what do you go to the Jets? When we get okay, we'll, we'll talk season, about that. We'll talk about that. We're, gonna, we're getting distracted. Thing, we're getting distracted. And we're going to do get, that. We're getting distracted. Oh, well. Pittsburgh right, Minnesota Cleveland. Bears. I'm still taking Pittsburgh. We'll go to Minnesota at the Bears. Wow. We got to travel to uh, Soldier Field. Minnesota minus three and a half. Uh, over under 40. Minnesota did not have a great first half. Um We'll see how it comes together. I think I feel like Sam Darnold maybe is finally getting it together. Chicago looked pretty decent last week, but Chicago still has their their coaching organization in place. I feel like Minnesota's going to struggle a little bit, but they're going to win this game. I think the part that we have to think about is is it six sacks or is it 12 sacks? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. It, it, I think that Caleb, my dad always talks about when John Elway was a rookie and my dad hated the fact that he opted out of playing for the Baltimore Colts to go to Denver. Yeah. And when Elway played the Vikings, when we had the front four that we did, they almost killed him. This could be another one of those games where Caleb Williams just holds the ball too long. If you really decide to do the sling it where he's not reading as well as he does or should, and that's why he's holding it longer, you're going to get picks from Madison and Gilmore and Murphy, if the defense plays the way that I think it's going to play, it's going to be a long day for them to the point where Eberflus might get fired. I'm starting Jefferson, Hawk, and Addison. I'm sitting Jones. If you are in a long league and you want to be risky, I would start Cam Akers because it's clear they're transitioning over to him. Yeah. And in long leagues, I would start Swift because he may get a punch in. But this is the type of game that Flores is like, I'm going to destroy you. Welcome to the league, Caleb. It would be great to see the Vikings have a statement game. 
they really haven't had one, I would say, so far, especially within, within their division. Texans was. It was 34-10. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but we need one when it means something late in the season, and this is the one. Well, and I feel like since like early in the season, the Vikings have been like, we either have a bad first half or a bad second half. We can't put a full game together. So I feel like we need a full game. Sean, for myself, I've got, uh, I need to fill a flex. So either got Jordan Addison or DeAndre Swift. That's kind of where I'm leading. That's what I've got currently. I think he's still, is he no longer questionable? Is he still good to go? Uh, remember, it's Tuesday night. Yeah. So we don't have the injury report coming out. True. I expect him to play. Watch okay. your injury reports, guys. We're early. Um, I got the Vikes by a minimum of 10. All right. I mean, I believe it. I just feel like we have not executed our offense. Our defense has been hot. So I'm hoping our offense finally starts clicking the full game and we can just put the pedal down and just go. So I'll take the Vikings. It's going to be a tight one until they pull. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I think Hawk's going to have a big game. I hope so. He's been looking good. He's been looking good. Josh Oliver, though, has been a nice surprise, too, as a backup. Well, I'll take that, too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We go to Detroit at Indianapolis. Um, We've got Detroit minus seven over under 50. Wow. Wow. Uh, Richardson got brought back. Uh, Not a great week to play a team that, quite honestly, is going to chew them up, spit them out. Ah, oh, man, this is Detroit all the way. I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be like a letdown after the big week, but quite honestly, this is just another team they should just go over. I hope they don't stumble. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high-quality podcast right away. Record studio-quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post-production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. The part that I struggle with here is Indy has a good defense. Um, I think... If I'm Indy, I make Richardson as mobile as I can. I've got a top two, three, four running back in Taylor. Pittman Jr. is not earning his new contract. I got, I think Detroit wins, but I think it'll be closer. What I'm saying by close is it's not a 14 or 21 point win. It's like a 10 point. Ten. Okay. I could see that. And it's um, all because of possessions. Um, Indy's going to be able to run the ball. He's going to drop back to pass and nothing's going to be there. Something will open up and he'll run for five to get the first. It's not going to be a pretty game and Detroit will dominate, but it'll be closer because of time of possession. Detroit will probably get one or two less possessions because of Detroit running or uh, Indy running the ball. 
I do hope. I, I do hope Detroit, though. I mean, I know they've been manning up, next man up to fill in for their defense. Mm-hmm. I hope that doesn't run out because I do worry that. Oh, you okay? It's blipped. Did that did blip? Yeah, blip for me. So I'm like, oh, I see Sean kind of blipping. So uh, we'll just keep going. I'll I'll note that at forty eight seventeen. Uh, where's, can I put the notes? 40, I'll just put it up here. 48, 17. We'll go from there. Okay. Um, and Todd blipped. Yeah. Uh, the blip. Yeah. Somebody blipped. I'm not blaming. I'm a, not a blip blamer, Sean. Okay. Put that in notes there. Okay. Here we go. Uh, yeah. I just worry that Detroit, Considering all of the uh, injuries they've had, the man, you know, next man up has been doing great, but that can wear on you, right? And that could be like, who do we got left? <laughs> so I do is hope it, that, the, yeah. Isn't who's the gentleman that broke his arm? Is it Kyle Van Oy? Mm-hmm. He was the middle linebacker. He was a, he is a stud. Now you lost Hutch. You lost Van Oy. Van Oy is a a key guy. So that's going to be interesting to see how they do, you know, replace that. Yep. I mean, how they, I mean, do they, I mean, that they're at a point where they will probably, I don't know what, I mean, they can't take their, their foot off the gas, right? Cause they've got a one, one game lead with the tiebreaker with the Vikings. Um, that they're going to have to still play. That's the tough part of being in our division. They're going to have to keep playing. They can't take a, 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 a siesta. They can't take a week off. They may be able to do that eventually, like you said, with week like 18, but that sucks, right? They're not really going to get a breather. Well, and the Viking schedule is easier. Remember, they yeah. still have to play the Ravens. Yeah. You know, so. we don't, I mean, our hardest team next to Detroit is Arizona. Yeah, and they can be a little bit erratic. They've not been known to finish off a season. So, (laughs) Kyler Murray may decide, like, "Eh, I'm a little bored. I'm not not feeling this. We go from there. Oh, well, uh, we go to the next game, Sean. New England at Miami. New England's had a far better season than anybody expected. But, man, playing down in uh, Miami with Pitbull, the uh, the the bra- the back room music playing. New England just having a good time, just being down in warm weather. Uh, I feel like Miami after last week feels like they're getting a groove on Tyree Kill. Hopefully, is finally feeling his groove. A Chan has been playing great. Um, I'm feeling better about that team. I've got I've got I definitely have Miami playing, and I'm starting Tyree Kill. I'm starting Tyree Kill and A Chan. Um, I think both of these teams. It's an unfortunate time for them to meet because they're getting healthy in Miami and starting to get a groove in New England. I mean, there was talk at the beginning of the year that New England wouldn't win a game. No. Yeah. At all. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I would say this. They are the best. Aren't they like three and eight? Yeah. They are the best three and eight team. They're getting better every week. And with a team that's trying to build a cult- culture under a new con- uh, head coach and a new GM, this is a team that I'm like, yeah, they're on the right path. They've got a quarterback that looks competent. Um, does he have a lot of growing to do? Yes. He's going to have to grow into next year. Mechanics, reading. But they can um, build around knows- him now, which feels good. It feels like it's good to know you got something, right? Versus, well, not only that, do we? Next year, they have a hundred and like eighteen million dollars in cap space. Yeah, so they'll be able to do free agents and have good drafts. Um, I think this is going to be a close game, but Miami, in my mind, with Tua being healthy, with Hill looking great, and HM come around, I'm really disappointed in. Waddle, Waddle has disappeared. It's like he's gotten paid and he's gone. I mean, well, he had two really bad drops. Yeah, maybe he'll come around. You know, I mean, who's their um, tight end? Oh, got uh, Jonu Smith. 
He had 103, oh. 109 yards and a touchdown last week. Wow. Wow. That's yard nice. touchdown game. That's awesome. That's got to feel good for them to finally. Yeah, I just dropped him for Kraft, yeah. and Kraft yeah. got me zero. And I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, that's how it works. Um, um, but in larger leagues, I would start May and S- Stevenson if you had to, mm-hmm. based on who's off. Yeah. Um, because keep in mind, it, this is a larger bye week because it's six teams. Usually, it's two or four teams. Oh yeah, I saw this that. Is I'm a like big one. Yeah. And there's a lot of players off this week. You've got Hall, you've got uh, Hill, you've got Burrow, Chase, Allen, London, Robinson, Pitts, in some yep. leagues, Cousins. So it's a this is a bear week in some regards. Yeah, I had two, I had two uh, holes to fill, so I've got a kicker i got to find. And then uh, I am, uh, at this point, I am going to be sitting... Um, going to be setting uh down uh who was i setting oh drake london yeah which is fine is malik neighbors available no <laughs> sean nobody is good in my god in my league i'm nobody actually is starting good in my league <laughs> what's weird is the person who had him this week yeah. dropped him uh because i was doing some research because uh J- danny dimes is uh out that and he has the best matchup against quarter uh, corners for really? the rest of the season. Oh wow, that's so crazy! I'm actually thinking about starting him this week, and I want to get your opinion. But let's move to the next game: Tampa, New York. Oh my goodness, Danny Dimes. Like I said, he's being rested, uh, so it's going to be what is it? The uh, Italian dream, <laughs> the Italian stallion is <laughs> starting <laughs> in New York. I remember that guy who like played well for is like one Tommy week. Tommy DeVito, Tommy DeVito, Danny DeVito's younger nephew. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's the Italian it's stallion, illegitimate, illegitimate child. That's um, right. It's like three twins years ago on the Saturday Night Live show. Exactly. It's like it's like the opposite. It's like, oh, that's what Danny DeVito created. Shouldn't happen, but you know it happened. So we'll see what it goes on there. But yeah, well, Tampa Bay. Do you go to Jersey Mike's? Oh, I hope so. I hope there's a sponsorship for Dan, uh, Dan uh, for, for Mr. DeVito. I don't know how that happens. Yeah. It would be like maybe that's some nepotism, Sean. But well, you know, I hope that happens. Um, but with Tampa Bay, man, um, I feel like they have built something there. And uh, I feel pretty good about that team. I, uh, I do too. Playing it. I don't have anybody from Tampa Bay on my team, which is just sad, but they're a good team. Well, I'm excited for them. I, be- I believe they're coming off of a bye. Mm-hmm. They are. So I would go Baker and Evans because I'm assuming Evans is back because they were talking about the week before last that Evans was close. Yeah. So I would do Baker and Evans. I would not start Singletary on the giant side. I have to be honest with you. I'm working on picking up Tracy jr. And I already have neighbors. I may start them both. Nice. Reason being is the secondary for Tampa is bad. And I'm hoping because Brian Dayball is coaching for his life. And they just fired the, uh, uh, they fired the GM, which rarely ever happens. No, that's the jets. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, okay. There we go. Even worse. Thanks, Jess. So, <laughs> so remember, the Jets are off. Expect more firings. And yes. Maybe Aaron Rodgers benched. Um, the part that I really wonder is they brought in Brian Burns. They brought in all those secondary guys. Brian Burns, you've got Cable Tibaldo. You've got Joseph the Big. Um, defensive tackle. How is that defense not better? Good question. And these guys, it, it, we're at the point now where New York, both New York teams are going to do a reset and your game film as a veteran is going to be important whether or not you have a job. Yeah. yeah. So this is where you've got a ball out, dude. Play for pride. Play for a contract. What kind of heart do you have? Exactly. Oh, it's like, it's what are you doing? And you're getting booed in New York. You don't want to be on the, the rags there. Um, I am trying to pick up the Tampa Bay kicker. 
because uh, I need that. So I think he's a good. I think he's got the highest average right now, which I need. So that's what I'm doing, Sean. All right. Yeah, that that it that is a good move, Sean. We go to the mighty Dallas Cowboys at Washington. Washington minus ten and a half. Wow, biggest line of the week. 46 points over under Washington has struggled a little bit in the last couple of games, but that's okay because uh, you're supposed to, when you got a rookie quarterback, they're just starting up and man, it's a good time to take on a team that quite honestly is in shambles with a, you know, basically a bad backup. All the people that just don't want to get along at Dallas. I got Washington all day. I got Washington by 20. And here's why. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> here's why. I'm cold. Washington's, led by block. Yes, it is. And Washington's coming off of a mini buy because they played the Thursday game. Mm-hmm. They're going to be pissed that they lost by a point. Oh, yeah. And Daniels is like, all right, I need to shred some backside. Who better to do it? I mean, the Dallas defense is 31st in the league. Robinson, McLaurin, all those guys are going to have a heyday. It's going to be ugly. If you've got uh, any one of those commanders guys, start them. I think it's going to be a statement game to A, put Dallas to bed because of the rivalry, right? Yeah. And B, they need to make a statement because they've got four losses and they're battling for a wild card spot. Because they're two yep. games back of Philly with a Philly win. So th- th- that's a statement game. Uh, it's funny. I, I, I listen to a lot of Pardon the Interrupt, Pardon the Interruption. And those guys are hardcore uh, Washington, D.C. reporters. They talk about the fact that Washington has n- had nothing to be excited about in the last, you know, in football in the last 25 years, they hate the name of the commanders, but they seem generously, you know, basically generally like focused to say, this feels right. This feels like, like Joe Gibbs is just like spirit of Joe Gibbs has just come back to Washington. It makes me very happy because I've been so tired of Dallas. I've been so tired of Philly um, at this point that just, it just, I'm just well, excited for something new. We got to go back to another important thing. You had a toxic culture with Daniel Snyder. Oh, God. For what, yeah. two decades? Yep. I mean, of a dirty old man. Yep. And now you've got a great ownership group with Magic Johnson. I know he's minority owner, but the mm-hmm. dude knows how to win. Yeah. That culture goes a long ways. And Dan Campbell or Dan Quinn just fits into that. Um. I, I think, and, and Cliff Kingsbury has harnessed all of those awesome talents that uh, Daniels had at LSU where they've been able to give him opportunities to be successful. I think the big issue that Washington's running into is the fact that your starting quarterback hasn't had a break. He went into a bowl game then it's training for the combine, then it's getting drafted. There hasn't been that recovery period. This mini buy being 10 days because they played Thursday, and then they've got a buy coming up. It's either next week or the week after is going to be huge. And it's going to get them ready for the playoff run. This is a team that could make a move. I think so. We get a team every year, it seems like, that is ready to feel like they're a real competitor. So I like this. I like their ferv, uh, fervor. I guess that's the best term to put it. And I like their quarterback. So I'm all in on uh, Washington. I'd like to see Dallas just go away. Because Dallas... One quick item. Yeah. Sorry, Todd. Washington defense could be a play if you need to because mm. your Buffalo defense could be off you may want to get Washington just because this could be a game where you get a few sacks and a turnover. Yeah, that's a good point. They could be aggressive. It could look nasty, nasty, nasty. I have no one on Dallas or Washington, so I'm good to go. 
I've got Washington. Uh, anything else on that game, Sean? Like I said, win by 20. And it's all right. We, gotta, we go to Kansas City at Carolina. Talk about a uh, great second week follow up after that game against uh, Buffalo. Carolina is a hot mess. They've shown some points of like, oh, they might have a bit of life, uh, life but at this point, there's not much there. Um, what do you think? I've got Kansas City. The line is 10 and a half, obviously. Uh, 42 is the over under. So I think Kareem Hunt could have a big game just because of turnovers with the defense uh, that Casey has. Chuba Hubbard might get a one yard plunge on something. Kelsey should have a big game. Um, I'm not playing young anywhere near this game just because Spags is going to be pissed off because they lost to Buffalo and they gave up that fourth down touchdown run. And it was set up perfect for them to stop them and make their field goal to win the game. Um, in larger leagues, I'm going to start Mahomes worthy and D hop, but my, my cornerstone guys are going to be Hunt and Kelsey. Uh, I don't think Isaiah Pacheco is going to play this game because oh, they're not yeah. going to need him to win. No, they're going to rest know. him one more yeah. game because they need him right for the playoff run. Here's an interesting piece. Rashid Rice, Marquise Brown, Hollywood, uh-huh. and I'm missing one other guy, are out due to injury. Uh, I, uh, more, more. Those are three electric speed receivers that have been injured with Casey. Could you imagine if they had those three with Worthy and D Hop? You would be looking at a vastly different team. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. The other thing, as a Chiefs guy, uh, Chance, I hope you're listening. The Chiefs can free up without cutting any major players. Uh, $45 million by moving roster bonuses to signing bonuses next year. You could have a veteran signing free for all. Is Kelsey sticking around? Kelsey just signed an extension. Two so, years, yeah. one year. Uh, he just signed a two year extension. Um, I think they want to go for it this year, but they're definitely better positioned in my mind for next year. So Sean, another, uh, I guess a complication to that. Did you know the Kelsey brothers launched a beer line? The garage beer. Yeah. I saw it at the store today. Uh, it was funny because it's called, Oh yeah, I saw it there. There's a standee with the Kelsey brothers. And I looked at him like, what is this? And so there's like a tequila lime beer. There's like the irregular lager. So basically it's Coors Light. It's beer flavored beer is what they said. I'm like, okay. Do they even drink beer? I don't know. I know. I think Jason well, does. Kelsey. I'm not, I'm not sure Travis does. I don't know. Jason had a 12 pack at Penn State of the garage beer. I thought okay. they just sponsored it. I didn't think they made it. Oh, yeah. They partnered with a brewery in Covington, Kentucky, um, which is interesting. There's a bright light lager. There's a like a lime, like almost like a, a like a Cuervo beer. And then there was a, another beer, too. I'm like, oh, interesting. Well, um, I'm an IPA guy. <laughs> Me too. I'm drinking a we'll uh, big hearted that. IPA tonight and celebration IPA. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, celebration. Amazing. Let me have to talk uh, about that. Like, I'm just like, you know, before we get started, just like beers we're excited about, just bring it in full circle. Uh, to maybe like to call it the tailgate, Sean. Maybe we should do that. The tailgate. Yes, we should. We should. Yes, absolutely. So there you go. Um, we get to our next game. Um, that's an easy one. Tennessee at Houston. Tennessee played in Minnesota tough. Houston looked like a much better team. It looks like and with Nico Collins, I think they'll be back on, full, uh, on, on all of their cylinders. Stroud, I think, is finally going to come back. I'm picking Houston. Uh, this will be fun. It's a home game. So uh, Houston minus eight over under 42. 
There you go. I think this is a closer game. Okay. Here's why. Mixon is running well. Yes. But Tennessee's defense is really good against the run. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a five point or less game. I think Mixon will do well. I think Nico Collins will do well. I'm staying away from Pollard, but Will Levis is starting to show maturation in the quarterback position, and he is starting to develop a great relationship with Calvin Ridley. Mm. If you look at Calvin Ridley's stats, like over the last four games, he's like a top three, top four. He's looked good. Player. He came out of nowhere. I'm like, Calvin Ridley. I'm like, I'm like, Calvin. and they're is connecting. There, is, Sean, I've got another question. Was there another Ridley that, I mean, beyond Metroid, obviously Ridley, the weird like dragon guy. Um, was there another Ridley that was really a, a top receiver or I'm just, or, or does Ridley just seem like he's been around forever, but he's actually not that so old. Ridley used to play for Atlanta. And then he was, was that, traded Steven to Ridley. Nope. Nope. Calvin R- Same Ridley. He Calvin got Ridley? Oh my God. Here, went over to Jacksonville. Jacksonville didn't pick up his, option or resign okay. him prior no he didn't they didn't resign him in the offseason because they didn't want to pay a second round draft pick to atlanta which dropped to a third and then ridley basically said okay you didn't sign me and signed with tennessee for a big money deal like when i saw it i was like wow uh-huh. but it's starting to pay off I think this game is going to be a lot closer. The The big question I have on whether this is a fringe game that um, Tennessee could win is, is Will Anderson healthy or not? Will Anderson is the number four, number three pick from last year's draft. Remember it was CJ Stroud and then they traded up to get Will Anderson. Yeah. Will Anderson has like seven or eight sacks this year. He's been out for like two or three games. If he plays, the Texans win. If he play, if he doesn't, I think it's a toss up because Daniil Hunter is not looking like Daniil Hunter on the Vikings. So basically the Vikings swapped out Daniil Hunter for Jonathan Grenard. Jonathan Grenard has more sacks. Than Neil Hunter does, and we're paying That's crazy. Him less. Well, it's wow. steam. I get it. Yeah. Um, and there's you know, Daniel is back in Texas where he was born and all of that, and good for him. But it might take him a year to get an understanding of the scheme where Gennard basically has just stepped up because I believe he leads the league in quarterback pressures. Hmm. Anyway. I think it's going to be close. I wouldn't be surprised if Tennessee wins, but I would, I would, I, I would only start Mixon and Collins. I mean, Mixon had Jesus. What do you have? Three touchdowns. He looked amazing, and I'm like, oh, they kept giving him ball. I'm like, hey, there's an opportunity for a receiver to catch the ball there. That might be uh, Nico Collins. Uh, no, but remember, so, Dallas yeah. can't stop the run. It's I a little know. bit different with Tennessee. Yeah, it was. A, it was. I a, think it was Collins a is. Collins will have a big game. He'll find his way. He looked like he's in a good spot. He get, was given the talent, amount of time to heal, not rush back. So I think they're in a good spot to really uh, play. If well. I were to predict, uh, Collins will have 12 targets, nine catches, 110 yards. I'll take it. I will take it. And I need it, Sean. I'm in a murder's road this week when I the team I'm playing against. So I need it. I hate playing the gambling line a half a touchdown or better because you can't have a half a touchdown no i'll give them i'll give them 12 9 110 and a touchdown perfect i'll take it uh so we go to next game denver at las vegas uh denver minus five and a half over under 42 vegas you know they try by 15 
<laughs> they try. That's all I'll say. They try, but they've got really nothing to play for at this point. It's just not going to work out. I do love Brock Bowers. He's been amazing. And uh, maybe they can build off of him because at this point, I'm not sure what else they do. I'll take Brock Denver Bowers too. Is a stud. He Brock is a stud. Bowers man. Is a stud. Denver, um, here's another game. If you need a defense, Denver is it. Uh, Gardner Minshew looked like absolute crap. That's insane. I mean, other. I mean, he, he was able to sling it to Brock Bowers, but I mean, let's be honest. From a tight end talent, he's top three. I mean, oh, he's yeah. better than Kittle. He's better than Andrews. The only two that I don't think he's better than is Kelsey and Hawk. Bowers is it, and and people and he's say, a, well, and he's a rookie better. And he's rookie, so that makes sense. Um, the fun part about Vegas, I, I, Sean, they don't have to be a great team because they're in Vegas. They get people that just show up anyways because they got nothing to do on the well, weekend. Yeah, I mean, let's I'm be at the honest. casino. I'm going to go over to Vegas, watch the game. Or if I'm a Pittsburgh fan, a Vikings fan, I am just going to go and fly over because it's 95 bucks round trip. And I'm going to go to the game and I'll spend money at the casino. Have a good time. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a perfect situation. Golden Knights, what else you got, right? <laughs> what I will uh, say is, here's my prediction. Okay. Brock Bowers, from now until 2029, well, 2030, will not be a pick later than the fourth round going wow. forward. Tight end one? He's that you good. Think? Tight end one, you think? Uh, he could be the first off the board. Okay. Next year, he might not be uh, because of, like, Sam Laporta. Sure. Yeah. But uh, he's my tight end one next year. Nice. Absolutely. Nice. Perfect. And I had him and dropped him. Uh, I've held on to him. It's been nice to have a tight end. I can rely we're, on. We're, we're, we're going to go through that at the end of the year. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, regrets. Sean yes. effed up. Here's my list. Yes. And it's long Abs- this year. Absolutely. So we got this game right now. This is the one that I think is interesting. San Francisco at Green Bay. Green Bay minus two and a half. 48 points over under. San Francisco is a team that just can't find its get its head out of his own bee hole. Um, Green Bay has lucked out. Somebody's luck is going to change this game. I don't know if it's Green Bay, but when you play at Lambeau, that's, that's the weird part. It could be a different output, but I'm going to pick San Francisco. I think they've just, they're, they're ready to go. They're ready to go. I got San Francisco. Um, I agree with you. I think what it's going to be is a 27-24 game. Okay. If Debo stops fighting with long stappers and kickers and actually does something, Uh, you've got Jennings and you've got Ricky Pearsall Jr. I think that's a dynamic combination. And if Kittle plays, I got San Francisco because... I think you're going to get enough pressure from San Francisco's defense to make love make a bad decision. Purdy doesn't make a bad decision. He generally doesn't. No. He it, he also isn't a check down Charlie like Kirk. Yeah. I get love has more attributes than Purdy, but Purdy's more like Tom Brady. You know what I mean? And love is more like a gunslinger, like a Farve. In this game, because of the defenses, and you've got Christian McCaffrey really getting back into the swing of things. Yep. A Green Bay win does two, th- or a San Francisco win does two things for us guarantees the Vikings a playoff spot. And puts pressure on the other AFC West teams so that we can have a higher wildcard slot. Yeah. I, this would be a big win. 
I'm looking at the weather uh, in Green Bay. Uh, sunny, 47 degrees, no precipitation. Uh, the low is 36, so there's no snow. The field should be good. Everybody should be fine. Well, not only that, in San Francisco, you can have a 50-degree game. Yeah, absolutely. There's no, so, there's no, and, and I would say at this point, Green Bay doesn't have a lot of, like, weather uh, opportunities. Because Minnesota plays at home against Green Bay. No opportunity there. So it, they may not benefit from being outside um, at the end of their season. So we'll see how that goes for them. So, um, yeah, moving on. We go to Arizona, Seattle. Wow, who would have expected this would be like a high-end game? It's going to be exciting. We don't know if Arizona will actually continue on their path of being a very quality team or their fall off because Kyler Murray gets bored. Uh, in Seattle, Gino is a good quarterback who's you know trying to really uh, raise the bar, and it's worked out pretty well with uh, uh, you know their head coach. But I don't know. I don't know. This team feels like they don't know how to step up and just really take control of the division. Okay. Todd, for me, does the defensive line with Bo Maffa, Byron Murphy Jr. step up with Seattle? If they do, I love Seattle. They're also at home. Yep. The fifth man. I think that pressure is difficult. DK is healthy. Walker is looking like a stud. I mean, yep. he's starred him all day long. If Gino m- doesn't make the turnovers and the defense with Byron Murphy Jr. and Bo Maffa play contain, I like Seattle. This is the tightest game of the week, Sean. It's minus one, Seattle. 48 points. Um, it'll be interesting, but yeah, to your point, uh, I think Seattle's got the edge being at home. I mean, that's probably enough. And with their running t- game, uh, Charbonnet and, and, and Walker have been really amazing. I would love to see Seattle have a Metcalf's great and all, but I would love to see Seattle have a better, like number one receiver, to be honest. Well, you got Smith and Jigma. Um, sure. So from a starting perspective, I've got Kyler Murray just because of he'll break it free for 30 yards in Mm -hmm. the running around he does. Um, And Connor, because they go to Connor a lot, and I love Walker here. I'm not starting Harrison Jr. because I can't deal with the inconsistency, Yeah, especially as we're getting to the playoffs. And you got, yep. And then DK and Smith and Jigba are my guys in the larger league. But if Seattle's defense shows up with Murphy and Mbafa, uh, mm, God, uh, <laughs> it, it, I mean that 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 rush. I mean, Byron Murphy is he's going to be a top five defensive tackle. That's great. Coming up, just a you know, in Bo and Bafa, oof, man, he the pass rush is nice. This is going to be a tough one, and I get why the line is one, one and a half. You said uh, minus one, pretty, pretty flat. I'm going Seattle. All right, I'm going Seattle. Yeah, I think so too. I think it'll be a good time to be Seattle. I just feel like they've got stronger leadership there, and I think they 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 know how to win. And we'll go from right. there. Uh, we got Philly at Los Angeles, the seven twenty Sunday night game. Wowie wow, this should be fun. Uh, Chargers have really uh, shown up, and they're fun to watch. I really like their team. Philly, though, if Saquon Barkley can do what he did, that's amazing. But, Sean, you've been stung by that, so you should probably speak to that. <laughs> so this is this is the Los Angeles Rams against Philly. What makes this difficult 
is you've got a slinger play action team in the Rams. So cop Nakua Williams. That is going to create fits in that Philly defense. On the flip side, Barkley right now is my offensive player of the year. He's amazing. Borderline MVP. Sean, I can't jump backwards without falling over. He jumped over a guy backwards. (laughs) And so I look at this game. I think it's whoever gets the ball last. This is going to be the highest scoring game. I think you're looking at 28-31. Wow. Okay. I don't know who wins because they bring different things to the game. But the other thing that's really impressive is the young folks that the Rams have drafted over the last two years on the defensive line, like Fisk, they're starting to get it. This is going to be closer than a lot of people think. I I think a lot of people early on were like, oh yeah, Philly should win this because they're what, eight and two, seven and two? Yeah. I don't think it's going to be that easy. No. The Rams are getting healthy. Also, um, I mean, Chargers. No, it's Rams. Mm, oh yeah you're right yeah it is rams i was looking at the other one baltimore's chargers on monday sorry my bad yes that's okay (laughs) um two la teams with like the logos now there's no ram in that logo it's just like what are they doing sorry i was distracted i uh, i think this is going to be close okay the other part that i think is going to be something to consider is the travel you're going three time zones. Yeah. You're going east to west. I think LA wins by three. I could and see that. Stafford's I, been playing like hell on fire. He's been doing great once he got his weapons back. It's been nice to watch that. Uh, Philly's, though, yeah. minus three over under 49, Sean. I think LA believes they can win it. Because I think they believe they should be nine or ten and one now if Cup and Nakua didn't get hurt. Yeah, yeah, it's been tough, and they've just been in the shadow of a lot of teams in the AFC, NFC West. So it'd be great right. though if they came back because it'd be nice to watch. Um, because at this point, um, that that division is up for grabs. So I don't know if Arizona's got it in them to win it, but uh, yeah. Be fun to watch. I'll take I LA I'm as not well. A Carly Murray guy. No, no, I'm not either. I've been burned by him in the past. So we go to Monday night, Baltimore at the Chargers, Jim Harbaugh versus his brother. Oh my goodness. Uh, Baltimore is on a rebound game, and the Chargers are feeling like they're coming alive. Uh, Baltimore's minus three, over under 50, and that would be our highest over under game. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm all in on the chargers, but my question is, um, I do have a defensive question to go through. I'm going to pick KC defense over chargers defense. I think for this game, I feel like I'm at, I I don't want to do that. So I'm going to pick KC's defense over the chargers. That's really my main decision this game. So for yourself, Sean, I, like the Chargers in this game. Here's why. I do too. Steelers play a physical defense. They wear you down. They beat you up. Similar to Detroit. I believe Detroit's record. So teams that play Detroit either have one or two wins after they've played Detroit because they beat the hell out of them. And that's what the Steelers do. The other thing that's going against the Ravens is 
they can't stop the pass. And Justin Herbert has been lights out in the last four weeks. And Lad McConkey has been dynamite. And then they've mixed in Dobbins. The other thing that the Ravens cannot match up well against is the offensive line of the Chargers. Harbaugh, when he drafted Joalt, has tied up his tackles. So now there is really no way in from a pass rush. Uh, Herbert hasn't been hit. He hasn't been beaten up. Now, on the flip side, the other thing that the Chargers maintained is, though they got rid of um, Mike Williams and who is the gentleman that went to the Bears? Oh, and uh, Eckler went to Washington. Oh, Keenan Allen? Um, Keenan Allen. Yeah. Is they still kept Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. So they've got great pass rush and the type of pass rush that historically um, Lamar hasn't been able to get away from. They also got a really fat guy and they've got a good secondary. I like the chargers by three, but I'm going to start McConkey Dobbins because I think Dobbins is just going to get a one yard touchdown plunge. Lamar and Henry are going to get yards, but I'm not sure they're going to get touchdowns. I'm not starting Andrews. And in larger leagues, I'm going flowers, but I hate to say it. I think the Ravens got their fifth loss. Ravens have been frustrating because they haven't been able to have consistent contributors. Um, Mark Andrews, uh, what was the other, what was their other uh, uh, highlight of the season for a tight end? Lightly? Likely. Yeah, likely. Uh, yeah, he just kind of like, oh, he's showing up. And then their wide receivers, their running backs. Uh, Derrick Henry has a great game. Then he has, you know, kind of falls off. That's the that's the frustrating part. It's like it feels like they can't be consistent. That's which is not great to contribute to a fantasy league, obviously, or a winning total. Uh, so for myself, um, I've got J.K. Dobbins. I am not playing the Chargers defense. And other than that, uh, I'm pretty good with. So who do you got to win? Uh, so I'm t- I'm picking I'm picking the Chargers as well. I just feel like with uh, with Baltimore at this point, I don't think they've got the the tools to win, and it's probably more driven by their offensive coordinator than their actual makeup of a team. I feel like they just don't have a consistent play, uh, you know, a, a play style that would say that they're gonna have a uh, toolkit to actually win if they need to really be a tight game. So there we go. I'll take the part that I find shocking with the Ravens is you don't, they don't make a team beat you. Like my strength is running. I've got Derrick Henry who leads the league in carries thousand yards has a score in every single game i've got lamar jackson i can run the football right beat me at what i do best i've got a tight end i've got a defense i've got a great tight end too i could throw short you know distant passes to my tight end who can make things happen with mark andrews who's been a tight top five tight end for the last five years that's the part I just don't understand with the Ravens and the Chargers get it. Chargers are like, I've got Gus Edwards, I've got Dobbins, and I've got a porker, like old Washington Redskins hogs offensive line that I can wear you out. Not only that, I've got a slot receiver in Lad McConkey where I can do play action to slice and dice you. You need to beat me at what I'm doing best. And I feel like the Ravens are like, yeah, I'm not going to take the best assets I have and use them. How does Henry not get a carry in the fourth quarter against the Steelers? I would say flowers going from like three points to 30, 32. There's like inconsistency. He should have primary targets that will be productive for him. You can't be like, I don't know who's going to show up to this week. 
that is not a recipe for success. Mm-mm. No, and it the other part is when you look at the culture, like my offensive line is like, am I running this week or am I pass blocking? What am I doing? And their defense have been has been has been soft in certain areas, which has not been a challenge the last couple of years with the uh, Ravens. So um, teams can beat them with the Ravens on the defensive side with them being soft. Hey, offense, throw them a bone, give it to Derrick Henry, and take eight minutes off the clock. Yeah, eat the clock, just run eat the, the hell clock. out of it. Eat the clock, and that's what Jim Harbaugh yeah. has done. He's like. We're going to get control. We're going to limit your possessions and we're going to wear you down because I've got pass rush and I've got secondary. And that's why, quite honestly, I really like Denver and the Chargers to make a move in the playoffs. That's going to be fun. I like that. I like the surprise team that were like uh, hot messes and now they're coming around. Um, Sean, from a sibling or a family member, like coach versus coach. How often have you we seen coaches that are siblings or like like related face each other? I mean, we've got the Harbaugh brothers this week. Has there been a lot of other ones? I just don't remember. Um, so you had the Ryan brothers. Yeah, buddy, buddy Ryan's kid. Yep. Um, the one Ryan was a. Wait, are Denver Buddy Ryan and Rex Ryan related or no? Different Ryans. So Rex is the son of Buddy. Oh, is he? Okay. And there's another. So Rex has a twin brother who also was a defensive coordinator. Okay. When Rex Ryan was the coach of either Buffalo or Denver, his brother was the defensive coordinator for the Ravens. Okay. Okay. There hasn't been a lot. Now, there are descendants like i believe there's a couple vince lombardi there's sons right? of quarterbacks i know that or uh of sons of coaches that have like yep. gone on yeah um shanahan's got kyle yep. and then uh norv turner's got his kid who's getting back into the mix yep. um but yeah there's a little nepotism uh apparently bill belichick's kid is a linebackers coach at a college but it's interesting. So, uh, as we wrap up, Todd, mm-hmm. of the coaching openings that are going to happen, you've got Dallas because McCarthy. The Jets. On a, well, you got McCarthy because McCarthy doesn't have a contract next year. Yep. Jets, Giants. Well, it hasn't happened yet. Yep. Um, Cleveland. Cleveland. Okay. Where wouldn't you want to be and where would you want to be? God. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I guess it depends on what you're inheriting, right? I mean, if there's a... uh, Because the Jets... There's no like understanding of like who your GM is, uh, who anybody will be. And that's the hard part because... Um, if you know, Aaron Rodgers has got a hard contract, right? I mean, so he's gone. Yeah. Okay. Um, hold on a second. One. Okay. Sean, we got the cow, the, the, the coaching round table of dead so, ducks, quarterbacks, lame ducks you yeah. say, or head coaches. So we've got the armchair head coach, uh, aerosol and, I think we should track this for the rest of the year because I think it's it's fun and interesting. So, rumor has it the Raiders are going to move on from their coach at the end of the season. The Jets have already moved on from theirs. Cleveland is going to move on from theirs simply because of the owner. Uh, there's a lot of rumors there. Um, even though the owner uh, sort of force-fed Deshaun Watson, and he's the two-time coach of the year. Dallas is moving on, clearly, because his coach's contract ends. Giants are moving on, uh, which is a clear signal that they're clearing house uh, with the benching of Daniel Jones. The Saints 
have already fired Dennis Allen. And then the Bears, uh, Matt Everflus, had a mandate where he would he needs to make the playoffs. So I'm going to go down really quickly. Um, Raiders, Giants, Bears have a little bit of cap space. Uh, Saints are in cap held. They're $65 million over. Dallas has $90 million committed to uh, Dal- uh, Dak Prescott. Another 35 committed to CD Lamb. And they have to still sign, if they want to, um, Micah Parsons. Uh, the Jets have a major cap hit with... Um, Aaron Rodgers, and then the Raiders are sort of in purgatory. So, Todd, question. If you were a GM or a head coach, what would be your your number one? And then who would be your run to the hills, run for your life? Wow, that's that's a good question because I feel like if any of these situations feel like the most – that have the most opportunity – it's either the Bears or the Raiders. Everything else feels like a hot mess that you just are going to have a hard time digging out of. Um, so I would say, because I'm thinking at this point, I'm like, the Raiders, I don't know where they sit with like cap space and in regards to graph picks. They're not in a bad spot. Not like others. I think they've got some things to build around. They just don't have the quarterback, which could be fixed in a draft, a trade, whatever. So I think, and then I think the Bears, because they're set up with a lot of talent and they just need a quarterback whisper and somebody that actually knows what the hell they're doing with an offense. But I'll take the Raiders because I think if you're going to come in with low expectations, a great fan base and a great place to be, I think the Raiders are it and you can start off from scratch and the expectations will be low because when was the last time that people were like, we got to win now with the Raiders. I don't think it's been that a thing for years with the Raiders. I mean, Rich Gannon, when was the last time the Raiders felt like they were a must win? It's been a long time. So I would take the Raiders job. The run for the Hills, Dallas. I mean, how was it anything else? Cap space, nothing. Uh, owner that well, quite honestly doesn't listen to you and and you basically just uh, have to deal with them. Dallas is the worst job in the NFL. But despite the fact that they got a lot of money, a lot of resources, it just feels like you you have no influence, no uh, leverage and it's just a hot mess. Um Jerry is how old? 84, 85. No, actually he might be 89. Who's inheriting the franchise? Is there a son? Stephen Jones. So, okay. Is he a person of like quality, integrity? Or is he like a jet setting playboy that is dealing with dad's money? Yeah. Uh, pardon my language, but the shit's going to continue. Henry? <laughs> it's like the Raiders, the Raiders' son who gets the bad haircut, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, now, but I will say the Raiders, they don't, they don't tend to influence as much as Jerry does. So if I went top to bottom, yep. um, I'm avoiding Dallas. Yes. Because I've got a 32-year-old quarterback who hasn't won a playoff game, and he's committed to $60 million for a minimum of three years. He's out. Do you have I'm a diva? Do you have a diva wide receiver too? Well, that and quite honestly, I would trade Mike Parson and hope you get two first round draft picks. They should have never signed Dak to the extension. If they had a real GM, not Jerry, it wouldn't have happened. Um, Cleveland is the next because you've got what three years minimum. With Watson. And nobody wants over. to play with him. Nobody yeah, wants yeah. to play with him. Okay. Right now, I would trade Miles Garrett and Ward. And if they give me first round draft picks or second round draft picks, just build it up because 
you're going to have to suck it up, draft a quarterback, not play Watson, and go from there. But the problem they have is this is not a great wide receiver draft year. So if I'm trading Miles Garrett and I can get first round draft picks, I want 27 and 28 picks. That's part of the rebuild. If I were, and you're going to laugh at me, I would go Bears one. Yeah. Jets two. Oh. And the la- rest, well, I, I, I might go Giants three. Here's why. I don't like Caleb, but I got cap space. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like Caleb because of the fact that he's not above 6'2". His me- measurables don't match up. And you can tell me the cows come home, he's a better talent than Patrick Mahomes, but you can blow it out your backside. But with that said, can I make him Drew Brees? Yes. I go with him. I lever my leverage my draft picks and my cap space, and I give him what he needs to be Drew Brees. He's not going to be Pat Mahomes. If I'm the uh, Giants, I'm getting out of Daniel Jones. I've got a stud at receiver and neighbors and I've got a defense set for me so if I can get Cam Ward out of Miami I've just changed the paradigm for the Raiders you got Brock Bowers and I trade Max Crosby in the offseason for picks and I target Arch Manning oh yeah that's two years down the road yeah that makes sense Cleveland dude brother or in purgatory as as you are with Dallas, unless you want to just trade your talent and do a rebuild. The Giants, I'm going after a free agent quarterback. And I'm using the pick to actually support him. I'm curious what that free agent quarterback will be. Sam Darnold? At that point, right? Is that what they're going to do? Who else is out there? Joe Flacco? coaching. Uh, cause I just, I, I, I mean, I would hope there might be some good quarterbacks that just are lounging in teams that just suck, but well, I don't know. I feel like a lot of good quarterbacks are stuck because of contracts and yeah, spite. Well, they wanted the quarterback that went to the giants. Uh, uh, oh my God. Um, Boyd? No. They wanted them according to Hard Knocks, and they had to go with Drew Locke. Uh-huh. Oh, God, who is it? Um, Sean, we'll do homework on that. I think we'll just figure it out. And we'll go from there. So you well, you said you wanted me to a one you and you wanted one team for one for team for me, and that, the team you'd pick and avoid. What was your one team you'd pick and one team you'd avoid? Dallas, I would avoid Dallas. Okay. And what and team would you pick? Probably the Bears because of cap space. Yeah, I don't believe in Caleb Williams, but you've but got somebody cap could space. somebody somebody could teach could coach him up though. I think he's could do that. Yeah, and it, it, it's clear. I mean, look at what um, Sean Payton's done with Bo Nix. Coaching's huge. Yep, huge. Yep. But this has been fun. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Sean, it'll be great that you go, you know, we, we do this every week. We have a great time. And uh, at this point, my my main takeaway from this week, I've got to pick up a kicker. I will do that. And I'm going to play. 
um, Jordan Addison for my flex. And I should be hopefully in a good spot. But man, I'm playing a tough opponent this week. It's going to suck, but we'll see how that plays out. For yourself, how are you feeling about? Um, really Bucks? quickly, the Jets backup was Tyrod Taylor. Oh, man. Talk about that. We'll hear about him for right. many, about many years. The, um, For me, the big pickup I think I'm going to go with because of where I'm at with wide receivers, Calvin, Calvin Ridley. All right. All day. Yeah, he looks good. He gets the targets. Yeah. Like I said, I felt like I've heard him for decades, but it's, there's certain like players are like, they're still in the league? Wait, is that the is that, is that the second generation? It's like Roddy White for me. It's like Roddy White's still in the league. Yeah, apparently he is. Oh well. Uh, so that is our show for this week, folks. We are so excited. Um, so with that, we are ending. Uh, it's been a big week for SFU. We hit. We celebrated 500 episodes of Secret Friends Unite. We uh, Mark had a great interview with folks out in Halcon on the uh, Halcon Chronicles. So we're very excited for what's next with Secret Friends Unite. So thank you for joining us on this journey. And a uh, big thing, Sean. Uh, we got a lot of so- new social. Uh, a focus and I think I might have some folks we could bring in from the socials to come on this show in the future in regards to the world of fantasy football so with uh, blue skies and threads there's a whole new group of people we can connect with which is amazing I know you've talked about having people that you'd love to have on the show as well so I think we need to hammer out we're going to have guests because I'd love to do that yes as would I I mean um we have to bring some more fun to the show other than us. Oh um, yeah. Particularly um, folks that are better in analytics than I am would be great. Or just the fun person who's a ga- casual guy who says, Hey, what would you do here? Well, here's my advice. What do you think? Or taking that in for, for us with who we start, it's going to be great. Um I, I'm just excited to talk to additional people. I mean, Chance was awesome. Absolutely. I will reach out. Sean, if you've got folks you want to bring in, that is something you want to do in this show going forward. So let us know if you're interested in talking about the world of fantasy football. Even if you're a rookie, God almighty, I'm the worst. And I just like to have a good time. So we will go from there. So thank you for joining us on this journey in the world of fantasy football. We're having a good time. Yes, we're Viking centric, but doesn't mean we don't love all the teams, all the players and all the points in fantasy football. Sean, tell people where they can find you around the web. Um, I'm on discord in the secret friends unite uh, group. And um, also on uh Twitter or what, whatever accent threads at SP at threads.com. I believe. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not. We'll document not that well and get that figured out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can follow me uh, at T Oxtra on the threads at secret friends unite on the threads. Also on blue, blue sky, which is a new site, which has been great. Cause we've got DMS and other things going on there. So a lot more like Twitter, which is uh, we've had a lot of cool uh, interest there as well at pod Oxtra. Yes. I'm using my real name and at secret friends unite. We're there as well on the blue sky. So with that, Sean, this is always fun. We're here every week. We're, Definitely going to be talking about football next week. The world of fantasy football is growing. So thank you folks for joining us on this journey. And as always, Skull. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and podcast services around the galaxy, as well as video on our YouTube channel. You can support Secret Friends Unite by becoming a Patreon member, get bonus programs and more over at patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite. Join our Discord community for even more discussions on all things geek. For all the latest updates on Secret Friends Unite, make sure to follow us on threads at secret.friends.unite and visit secretfriendsunite.com. Find our merchandise at TeePublic and Redbubble. Thanks for listening and may the force live long and prosper.